Good evening, Good everyone. Evening. Time for another Good member update. update. Now, this is a silver chart, one hour chart. You can see we had a big bounce back today. Uh, let's let's get in closer here and take a look at the action. Um, it's it's kind of crazy. Not only that, a big after hour spike here uh, in volume, at least. So this type of activity, you can see 50. 50 cent move basically 1535 down to 1475 uh, actually 60 cents um, up down up down what's going on well it's a fake market uh, can you imagine if you saw such a thing in the Dow um, everybody would know they're looking at a fake market but they do that in silver so I think this one's going to continue up you can see it's a, a fairly nice pennant that's forming um, what's the news? Well, the news is kind of hinting now that they're not, the Fed's not going to raise interest rates in September. I think everybody that, that I trust has said there was no way the Fed could raise interest rates at all. And I think we're going to see that when we dig into the, uh, oil story, because we're going to be looking at the oil story big tonight. But, uh, I want to show you the Dow first. The Dow is what you could call teetering. And uh, you can see the most important things are going to be the, the support lines. One key one, of course, has to be drawn for the 2012 bottom. These, these roughly correspond, but they don't quite correspond. So we have to draw this one right about there. And you can see that that, that one is penetrating that line. The big one... We'll call it the Obama rally. Uh, that's still down here if you draw it on that low. And if you draw it tighter, it comes up to corresponding with this one. And we're just above it on, on that one. So it, it's teetering. If we pull up the MACD, uh, you can see that there is a crossing of the zero line. That is fairly unprecedented. I've shown you that before. We're talking a one-time penetration around back in 2011. And that was one that, that corresponds with uh, some of the economic indicators that dove at that time and then the Fed printed a bunch of money. I, I don't remember if it was QE uh, uh, twist or QE3 or which which one it was, but really so this is uh, this is starting to border on one of these here type of things. Uh, this this right now is the market is trading. Of course, we could snap back, turn up, and this thing could be uh, put away. The VIX could go down to nothing again. But the way it stands right now, we are perfectly on course to get a September October crash. Uh, I think that Martin Armstrong was 2015.75. Uh, that corresponds to October 1st of 2015. So right now, we are on course to get one of these. Uh, will we get it? I don't know. Now, I wanted to spend the rest of the time on oil because uh, this is something that just bothered me today because I noticed uh, I was shocked when I drove by my local gas station today and saw the gasoline price at $2.75. And you can see we're down here plumbing the lows. Uh, actually, these are like volatility lows when you look over here. Uh, an average price for these lows, um, you know, when you want to look at trading range when you're looking at a low like that, an extreme volatility, because that means for a lot of the time that it trades here, you're not actually getting that low price. You're only getting it on a couple days. So that extreme volatility period was was uh, just for the months of December and January and part of February for the end of 2008 and the beginning of 2009. And that, of course, was the election of Obama and massive, massive money printing bailout by the government. So you can see the average price in that fluctuation was about between the low of 33 bucks and 50 bucks. So uh, in the, the middle of that is about 40 bucks. Well, that's where we are. That's what we hit today. We hit about 40 bucks on the low. You can see $40 and 50 cents. 
And uh, so the big question one would ask, and I'm asking, is why is gas at $2.75 when oil is at $41 a barrel? Now, I already did the math, so I'll show you a chart. Uh, this first one here is from Gas Buddy. You can see that at the peak of the oil bubble, and by the way, that was the one that Lindsey Williams called. And I will say that uh, the premise behind what Lindsey Williams says is that uh, basically uh, the oil business, these are the Illuminati Satanists. These are the people that run the world. And for looking the, at the information I've discovered tonight, I have to say absolutely he is correct. Uh, this is the Illuminati. This this market is as fake of a market as silver and gold, if not more so. And I'm going to show you that. So here's just a simple question one would ask here. This is the math I did. You've got a high of $4.10 a gallon on gasoline, Nash, this national average. And don't you know nitpick on the exact numbers. These are rough numbers. And uh, we've got... Um, uh, $4.10, $2.59. So we're off about 32%, uh, I'm sorry, um, 36% uh, from the highs on gasoline. You can see it went all the way down to a buck fifty-nine a gallon. We're at two fifty-nine a gallon on gasoline. Now if we go back to oil, we're down from $150, $147.40 a barrel down to $40, 41, uh, 40, 90, $41 a barrel. You do the math on that, it comes to a 72% decline. So here's the bottom line. You've got a 72% decline in the price of oil and you've got a 36% decline in the price of gasoline. Um, there's gotta be an explanation for it. Now I'm gonna show you the explanation is scamflation because this isn't inflation, this isn't deflation. This isn't uh, stagflation. This isn't biflation. This is scamflation. This is just an outright theft and robbery by the oil companies or whoever's behind this. I don't know if it's the refineries, the oil companies, um, but uh, I'm going to show you the facts on it. First of all, though, I want to take you over to the Bitcoin market. We had a big crisis in the Bitcoin market last night and uh, the market got cracked really hard from about 250 down to 220. Now that's Bitstamp, and uh, it's educational to look at uh, the different markets here. Now BTCE uh, went from about 250, and it only went down to uh, 221 there, but subsequently we got a low of 211. And then there's the Huobi. This is going to be the major volume trader in China. This is going to be the major player of all. This one in OK Coin, and you can see they got a drop from about six, uh, 1,600 down to about uh, 1,450, back up to 1,500. Percentage-wise, really nothing to speak of. But let's look at the Bitfinex chart. The Bitfinex chart is absolutely staggering. The Bitfinex chart dropped from 250 down to 162. Now, if we zoom in here, let's go ahead and zoom in and pull over to, we're on the five minute chart, so these are gonna be five minute time periods, but you can see here, uh, a massive uh, drop percentage wise. And look at the rally, all the way back to 255. Do you see how that actually made a new high above where it had traded? For one, two, three, four days, it went to a higher price than it traded for four days prior to that. So why is that? Well, Bitfinex is actually a uh, leveraged operation. I have an account there. I went and played with their margin account a little bit. It's kind of interesting. I did a video earlier on it. Um, they have a margin account there. And you can fund your margin account with either dollars or Bitcoin. They allow you to trade on margin. It essentially operates like a bucket shop. So they keep it very tight. It's kind of neat because the first one I deposited, I put a half a Bitcoin in there. And when I made, I think I went long Litecoins or something like that. But it showed me exactly where my position would be liquidated, just like a bucket shop. Uh, if, it, if the price hits a certain point, we liquidate your account. 
Now that's why you see this price action. You see the running of the stops? This one especially, up to a record high. They took all the stops out. Um, everybody who uh, was above the market there, uh, they got taken out. Any protective stops got taken out on the downside and on the upside. Uh, so that's a crazy market. If you want crazy activity, now I don't know if it actually traded there. Uh, they do have a cash account. You don't have to have things in margin. So theoretically, last night, you could have picked up Bitcoins for a, a buck, uh, 162 bucks a Bitcoin. They're back up to 230. So I just bring that up to show you that, uh, you know, this is, uh, Bitcoin is the most real market that we have right now. And by the way, that means that Bitcoin is forecasting some type of big uh, event coming soon because Bitcoin actually has been uh, predicting things better than anything else. And actually Litecoin has been predicting things better than Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin indicator is indicating something big is coming, probably a, a market crash. That's certainly what the stock market indicators are showing. So let's get back to this oil story because this is very interesting to me. I was very outraged and I really want to know why this is happening. So let's look at, of course, you're going to have to have explanations in the mainstream media because every Joe Sixpack, just like me, is going to be asking, wait a minute, I'm hearing in the news that oil is as low as it was in the bottom of the 2008 crisis, but I'm paying 275 for gasoline. What gives? Well, here, here's the article. Oil is cheaper than it's been in years. Why aren't gas prices? And you can see there, that's August 18th. Oil prices have fallen this month to their lowest point in years, but fuel costs haven't fallen nearly as quickly. Remember I showed you that uh, oil has fallen 72%, but gas has only fallen 36%. While West Texas Intermediate Crude, a U.S. benchmark, has dropped 15% in the last month, the cheapest it has been since 2009 prices at the pump have slipped just 3%. A barrel of crude cost 42.61 Tuesday afternoon. The national average for a gallon of regular grade gasoline is now 266 according to AAA. Still much cheaper than last year, but well above what a gallon cost last winter. The Gulf owes to a handful of factors. More people drive in the summer, for example, and the blend of gasoline produced this time of year is costlier to make, but gas prices have also been pushed up by trouble at a refinery in Indiana, industry followers say. Machinery issues at BP's refinery in Whiting, Indiana, the nation's largest outside the Gulf Coast, have sent gas prices in the Midwest, including Illinois and Indiana, soaring by more than 50 cents in a week, says Michael Green, a spokesman for AAA. That was enough to push up the national average this week, ending a 27-day streak of falling prices. But just because the national average is jumping doesn't mean that everybody's prices are going up, Green said. Crude oil prices have been pushed down by high production, concerns that emerging economies aren't growing as fast, and expectations that Iran will export more oil once sanctions are eased. The U.S. Energy Information Administration expects crude oil prices to begin to increase next year but stay at lower than usual prices. The refinery's impact highlights the divide between the cost of crude oil and the prices at the pump, said Tom Closa, head analyst at the Oil Price Information Service. Gasoline can't be stored as easily as crude oil, so hiccups in the supply chain can quickly hike up prices, making a market prone to big swings. Gasoline blends, blah, 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 blah. So this is the explanation. It's really no explanation at all. And I'll show you why. But let's look at another one here. This is from 2012. But this gives you a breakdown of what goes into gas prices. This is why are gas prices so high? Why are gasoline prices high and rising? Motorists are paying more for gasoline at this time of year than they've ever paid. As of February 8, 2012, gasoline prices in the U.S. averaged 375, 13% higher than a month ago, highest on record, etc. Gasoline prices are composed of four main components, supply and demand for oil, taxes levied by federal, state, and local government, the cost of refining crude oil, and distribution and market costs. The largest component of the price of gasoline is the price of oil, which makes up almost 70% of the price at the pump. This is followed by taxes that represent 13% of the price. Now, I don't remember a rise in taxes, so that's out. 
distribution and marketing costs. I don't see how those could have risen that much in a short time. And refining costs at 8%. So refining costs are only 8%. The cost distribution varies with seasonal changes as refiners retool to switch from winter grade to summer grade gasoline to perform regular maintenance on their facilities and to fix any breakdown of equipment. Now, I found another article on this and it is true that some of the ridiculous costs, and we're talking hundreds of billions of dollars, which are caused by the government, government regulations, EPA, insane regulations, having a grade of gasoline that's different in summer that's required than is it, than it, it is required in winter. It's, it's just stupid beyond belief, but that's government. Uh, you've also got different grade requirements in different states, all kinds of stupidity, and that's caused by the government. But that doesn't explain the main story here. Now, interestingly here, we have this explanation. Isn't it funny that you find this in every single story where this is the question that people ask? They say currently several refineries are down for maintenance or equipment failure that is a result of normal operations. So that's the typical explanation you get. Now I'm going to show you that that is a bunch of nonsense. But before we do that, let's look at this definition. This is biflation. Uh, some people have said this is what we're looking at because uh, we know that the middle class of America probably the middle class of Australia, Canada, and all the Western nations in Europe, everyone else is being squeezed to death by these bankster, gangster monsters who run our system. And I personally believe, I definitely believe this is intentional. I believe they intend to do this. I believe they intend to destroy the middle class in the entire Western world, make them dependent on the government as much as possible, and bring in uh, dictatorships or communism in all of these countries. I personally believe that is the goal. But, uh, but biflation is the uh, description of an economy where you have prices of some things going up and some things going down. So one of the explanations they give us for this type of thing is biflation. Biflation is a state of the economy in which both inflation and deflation of the prices of different types of assets occur simultaneously. The term was first introduced by Dr. F. Osborne Brown, a senior financial analyst for Phoenix Investment Group. During biflation, there's a rise in the prices of commodity earnings-based assets, inflation, and a simultaneous fall in the price of debt-based assets, deflation. The prices of all assets depend on the demand for them and the volume of money in circulation to buy them. On the one hand, an overabundance of money is injected into the economy by central banks. Since most essential commodity-based assets, food, energy, clothing, remain in high demand, their prices rise to, uh, to the increased volume of money chasing them. The increasing costs of purchasing these essential assets are the price inflationary arm of biflation. On the other hand, there's an increasing there is in increasing unemployment and decreasing purchasing power. As a result, more money is used to buy essential items and less is available to buy non-essential items. Assets such as large houses and expensive cars are in less demand. As a result, their prices fall. This is the price deflationary arm of biflation. So first of all, we want to ask, are we seeing biflation? And I would have to say no because things like large houses and expensive cars are, are going up in price, uh, but we've got gold and silver being suppressed in price. We've got oil going down in price, but gasoline not going down in price. Uh, biflation does not explain this situation. Do we have hyperinflation? No, we don't have hyperinflation. Do we have recession? Well, we might, or we might have depression. Do we have stagflation? In economic stagflation, a uh, portmanteau of stagnation and inflation is a situation in which inflation rate is high, the economic growth rate slows down, and economic and, and unemployment rate steadily high. It raises a dilemma for economic policy, et cetera, et cetera. Well, do we have stagflation? I think you could argue we have something like that, although the government is lying about unemployment. But as far as the price of oil and the price of gasoline, there is no traditional explanation to explain these. And I'm gonna show you how these explanations, like this story from the Washington Post, or uh, this story for the from the IER, 
uh, just don't explain what we're looking at here. So let's pull up a couple of charts. And these charts, if you really want to get into this and dig deeply, you can go to the EIA's uh, site. There is an unlimited number of charts and they give you everything you could possibly ask. That's the U.S. Energy Information Administration. I'll put a link on the uh, video for that. So the first one we want to look at here is this is total gasoline retail sales by refiners. So that was the first one I wanted to know. And the reason why is because one of the things they cite is this seasonal thing. And another thing they cite is the demand they say things like, well, the refiners just can't keep up with the demand for gasoline. Well, the first thing that just smacks you in the face here is that from 1985 through 2007, we had 60,000 gallons per day of total retail gasoline sales by refiners. We are currently at under 25,000. So we are at six, we're at 40% of where we were for 25 years. Now that tells you we're in a depression. We're not in a recession. We've been in a depression since December of 2007. And the gasoline sales have been more than cut in half. So this chart alone tells you that there is no traditional explanation for what's going on here. There is no uh, lack of uh, gasoline available because uh, there's too much demand for it because it's summer driving season or some such nonsense. The demand for gasoline is cut in half. Americans are using less than half the gasoline that they used for 25 years. Now, the next chart is even more shocking. This chart is, where did that go? Well, it looks like my chart disappeared on me. Um, let me go back and find the chart. Uh, so the other chart that I have is a chart that shows the refineries. Well, I'm not going to find it. So um, let me tell you what that chart showed. That chart showed the, oh, here it is. I'm sorry. This is weekly U.S. refiner and blender adjusted net production of finished motor gasoline. In other words, this is the amount of gasoline that's put out by the refiners. Okay. So we have a crash in U.S. total gasoline retail sales. Refiners are only selling about half the gasoline that they sold for a good 25 years straight. Yet you can see here that in 2015, we broke through this 10,000 mark of net production. That's telling you that the refiners are refining more than they ever have, but Americans are using less than they ever have. What is the explanation for these numbers? I have absolutely no idea. Now, there may be something I'm missing. There's a ton of charts on the EIA site, and you can go and find them and uh, search through them. Maybe there's something about this net production number uh, I'm missing, or maybe there's something about this total sales that I'm missing. I don't know what it could be, uh, but it looks to me the only explanation I can think of here is that they're exporting gasoline that they're refining that they can't sell to Americans and then they're lying about having a fake shortage here to keep gas prices artificially high. I can't come up with any other explanation. The bottom line is this entire thing looks like one gigantic scam, really. I'm going to call this scamflation. It looks to me like this oil industry is just another fake market run by Illuminati Satanist insiders to line their pockets and to fleece the people of the world, the American people especially, and to bankrupt the middle class. Because given these numbers here, that gasoline usage has been halved and that refinery exports 
uh, refinery um, production is at records and oil prices are at record lows and gas prices are only down 50% from what they should be. There's no other explanation I can come up with except that this entire thing is a complete charade. It's a complete fraud. It's collusion and criminality by the oil companies, by the refiners, uh, by everyone involved. They're all criminals. They're rigging the market and uh, they're in bed together with the Fed and the Congress and everyone else. And their purpose is to fleece and destroy the middle class. That's the only conclusion I can come to. So uh, once again, back to the silver chart, we've got that bounce back. I think probably pulling up the MACD that this bounce back is going to hold. That's what I said yesterday. I said that there's probably only a 20% chance we'd see new lows. This bounce back comes on the heels of the Fed trying to walk away from a September rate hike. But remember, uh, we're looking at a, well, we're looking at a completely collapsed crude oil price, but we're also looking at a teetering Dow Industrial that uh, really looks like it's going to be the third time that we get that paper equities crash. Let's go ahead and pull up the silver overlay because that's the one that I predict that these two are actually going to meet in the middle and we're going to find that uh, silver and the Dow actually cross when finally the realization comes that uh, paper assets are going to go into an enormous downdraft and uh, real assets are going to go explosive to the upside. And we'll talk to you next time.